Belichick. Nobody else even close to him. Sindrick, Stenhouse, front of the field. We're down to eight to go. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. now by three quarters of a car length has got it in that outside lane. Well back in the lead pack. There's a third groove materializing. Left by Buston Dillon. That is all the way at the back of the pack. And you've got to wonder if that outside line, that third lane, starts to get some momentum. Who in front of them that's in the middle lane will jump up and pull that third lane forward. For the moment, however, it's two by two by two, at least for the top 10 or 12. It is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. trying to gain some momentum around that outside lane. Nothing doing this time. Chase Elliott, William Byron, and Kyle Larson in tow. If you have a plan, it's time to execute it, but boxing heavyweight champion said it best, and it applies here. Everyone's got a plan until you get punched right in the mouth. Here they go, back to turn number one. Gloves are off as they hit turn number one. Laps winding down here at Talladega. For the moment, it's two by two. That extreme outside line has petered out with Austin Dillon, Daniel Hemrick, and A.J. Allman. Meanwhile, the leaders hit the back straightaway. Todd Gilliland will be gobbled up by them here in short order. Gilliland running all by himself right there. Here's the pack right here, trying to catch him and put him another lap down. Austin Sendrick showing the way on the bottom groove. Very comfortable on that bottom line. Right behind him is Brad Keselowski. And to Keselowski's right elbow, it is still Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with Chase Elliott on his bumper. Shane Van Gisbergen at the tail end of the field has pulled out a line and brought one driver with them to form up three wide. That's Austin Dillon. But man, Dave, they've got a lot of work to do and no drafting help to help along. They tried that four wide line a couple of laps ago with Dillon leading the pack. It did not work. He fell back in line. This time around, it will not work. SVG falls back in line as they make their way around the left car of Gilliland. Leaders now will shift drivers right around the lap car of Todd Gilliland. They will complete that pass. Oh, and Cedric gets turned. Here we go. They're all wrecking. Spinning to the bottom of the racetrack. Joey Legato, Chase Briscoe. Basically, the entire field comes to grief. Crashing, spinning, and spiraling down to the bottom of the end of the back straightaway. It's easier to tell who didn't, who made it through versus who didn't because the whole pack comes apart on the back straightaway. Not an exaggeration. As the leaders come off turn four, there are only six cars that make their way back to the trioval. A heap of beat up race cars sit at the feet of Mike Bagley. It started when Austin Cindric got turned to the right. That probably had to be a draft bump or a, a bump draft gone bad. It turned Cindric drivers right across the face of the field, and everybody came piling in. It is a massive smokescreen. The entire backstretch, racing surface, and apron are coated with skid marks of everybody sliding and crashing down to the bottom of the racetrack. About half the field is sitting at the entrance of turn three, and an armada of safety crews have arrived on the scene to tend to all of these wrecked race cars. Well, you want a shocking stat? How about this? Seven cars have come across the start-finish line. They are Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's still running and out front of Brad Keselowski, William Byron, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Christopher Bell, and Austin Dillon. We're under caution. It all came apart down the back straightaway. Joey Logano into the back of Brad Kozlowski. Brad into the back of Austin Sindrick. Mike Bagley with the call. And it involved just about everybody. We'll reset it the best we can when we come back. We've gone under the red flag unofficially. We have four laps to go. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is out front. From Talladega Super Speedway, this is the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. The field, what's left of it, is stopped on the back straightaway. Seven cars are torn up and on pit road, and a whole lot more than that still sitting out there in the back straightaway in front of Mike Bagley. Jeff, I have been announcing races on this back stretch for a long time. I don't believe I've ever seen... A big crash like that here at Talladega. It started halfway down the Alabama Gang Super Stretch. A couple of cars got locked together. Field totally blocked. Everybody trying to escape and having zero success. Right now, there are cars that are at the bottom of the racetrack being tended to. I see Josh Berry's car. He's climbed into an ambulance. Joey Logano's car is here. John Hunter Nemechek has been trying to get going for about the last five minutes. He's just ripping the tires off the car, ripping the uh, tires off the wheels. He's, he can't. He's fasted right now. Harrison Burke. 
Burton is here. You got Michael McDowell, who is on the apron. But all of those cars are shrouded by safety vehicles, wreckers and ambulances and track ops trucks and the like. They're all trying to tend to the cars. And once the cars get removed, then they can take care of getting all the fluid mopped up and all that. It is still quite the active scene over here at the end of the backstretch. With the red flag out, teams are not allowed to work on their race cars on the pit lane. They can, however, swarm them and get a peek at it and formulate a repair plan. Two playoff drivers at the entrance to pit road in Alex Bowman and Daniel Suarez, they are on the pit lane. Both of those cars have some damage. Alex Bowman's right front was not even rolling when he brought his car in. Also down there is Corey LaJoy and Martin Trex Jr. Their team's formulating a plan. And Steve Post, there is another playoff driver whose car is parked in front of you. That is Tyler Reddick. And yes, they are looking specifically at the right side. The, the, the entire front of the car is all damaged up and pushed back. They focused on the right side before. Before the red flag came out, they were able to come down and get the right side tires off. Crew members are looking up under the car. They cannot touch it because we're under a red flag. Billy Scott is atop the pit box here. He is, or actually Billy's sitting on pit wall here, and he is given the final instructions on how they're going to attack this race car. This was the car that won the race here in the spring. Talk to Billy Scott pre-race. They wanted to survive today. They feel like they're really good at the Roval. If they could survive today, they could put themselves in a really good spot right now. They got a lot of damage on this race car. Relative to some of the other ones, they might be able to get back out, limp around, and get a few spots. We'll see what happens. But that's the story with Tyler Reddick down here on pit road as he sits aboard that Toyota. You know, unofficially, I've got like 93 cars involved. Uh, and, and just to try to name them is going to be difficult. Uh, Todd Gilliland, Tyler Reddick, Alex Bowman, Michael uh, Michael McDowell, Chase Elliott, John Hunter Nemechek, Austin Sendrick, Harrison Burton, Josh Berry, Joey Logano, Chris Busher, uh, Corey LaJoy, or uh, check that, make that, Justin Haley, Bubba Wallace, Daniel Hemrick, uh, Anthony Alfredo, A.J. Allmendinger, and that list is going to grow. And it would appear as though Zane Smith, Hosevar involved. It, how do you, I mean, we, we thought it could happen. It, it didn't up until that moment. They were racing three and four wide. And then you get to that, that push, Mike, back. Or we'll get with Mike here in a minute with more on the cleanup. But when you start drafting, one car gets into the another, into the another, into the another. That's basically what happened. Todd kind of pointed that out. That wreck actually happened about four, five rows back and triggered the whole thing. Yeah, and that's part of draft racing and pack racing here at Talladega. We talked about it earlier where they're three and four wide for 165, 170 laps. Then all of a sudden we have a problem break out and you're going to have yourself a heck of a mess. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is being scored the race leader with four laps to go as we sit under the red flag. Let's go to pit lane and Jason Toy. His crew chief is Mike Kelly as he sits here and talks things over with the rest of the crew and trying to get a plan formulated here because I heard Tab I heard Tab Boyd on the radio when that happened. He goes, wow, but Ricky got away with it. How's the race car, and what do you guys anticipate here to get things rolling? Yeah, it seems like the car's okay. He took a shot right in the middle of the door. Best place it could be if you're going to get hit, and it uh, seems like all the wheels are turning the right direction. Um, it's going to be a battle. There's some really good guys up front, and some of these guys are in the middle of, you know, running for a championship, and we're out here to try and do good for ourselves and our sponsors and our team. You know, we're... We're, we're ran well all day, got a bunch of stage points, and we just want to cap it off with a solid finish. And if we got a shot at it, we're going to go get it. Do you need to bring him in, you think, or you think he's good to stay? We'll see. You'll see. We'll see. <laughs> he's not going to tip the cap just too much there. It's Mike Kelly, the crew chief for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Jason, he is not going to give you that answer. <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, like you said, they're not going to play their cards right now. Uh, you know, one thing that, and Alex, you can weigh in on why and what has to happen. There's a number of drivers that are still sitting on the back straightaway going into and up into the banking of turn number three. Uh, you might think that they're waiting for a wrecker because the car is that badly damaged, but that's not always the case. The tires are down. They're waiting to pull away. How is that going to happen? Well, what they have to do is because there's so many race cars 
involved in the crash and not that many safety vehicles to tend to every single race car. So the, the obviously the, the triage for the safety personnel, go to the drivers who you know are going to be out of the race, cars torn all the way up, and then make sure they're okay, get them out, get them into the ambulance to get to the infield care center. Then there are other drivers, drivers like a Joey Logano and some of these other drivers that went for a slide, maybe some slight contact out there, Todd Gordon, but will not get out of the car. They're waiting for one of the NASCAR officials to plug in to the A post on the driver's side for the actuator. Yeah, so I mean, mid-season, NASCAR came forward and they kind of came up with, because we just have these cars that get stuck because they got flat tires, there's actually an option that teams can install, and I would say almost everybody here at Daytona has it installed. It's a, it's a, it's a pressurized system that they can put 900, they need a minimum of 900 PSI, and, and that safety vehicles have canisters. They can, they can plug up to multiple cars and do this. It, it pressurizes, and it's a slave cylinder on top of the rear springs on the shock that pushes the shock extension down so that the wheels get pushed down and you can drive on the wheels alone without the rubber of the of the tire and actually get some traction driving these cars back to pit road. And again, like you just said, we see that a lot at Daytona. We certainly see it all right here at Talladega. We're under the red flag. Four laps to go. The field shut down on the back straightaway and cleanup continues going on into turn number three.